Hey dear, how do you feel about computers? Sleepy. Oh. Uh oh. You're not scared about computers? No. I'm sleepy. Oh, well that's good then. So this episode didn't scare you? It, it wasn't supposed to. Yes. Anyway, what happens in Was it actually 27? supposed to scare the me? The war machines. Kind of. It's kind of meant to be a little bit scary. I mean, yes, AI-driven computers are fucking horrifying. The idea of that you could just, like, randomly generate, like, an entire person is fucking terrifying. I mean, you also have to add into a fact that uh, computers were brand new and terrifying and not at all for home consumption. So it was like, no one knew what a fucking computer was. So it's Thomas like Edison was a witch! Fear. Burn the witch! <laughs> anyway, episode 27, The War Machines. What happens? Tell us. Tell us, dear, tell us. Oh, if you can't tell... Oh yeah, by the way, uh, by the way, for those, because we skipped the last episode, uh, Stephen's gone, sorry. Uh, I'm very tired, just by the, the doctor way. doctor and Dodo. Just heads up. Um, we see a shot of the city, and there's a nipple building, and we s- zoom down onto a street shot, and everyone comes out of the TARDIS, and by everyone, of course, I mean Dodo and the doctor. And yeah. they put an out-of-order sign on the TARDIS as a Bobby walks over, and they're oh like, my. Haha, they think the TARDIS is real, we're in London in the 20th century, and there is a tower in the middle of London with something really powerful in it, but it looks like a penis. Uh, and the Doctor you has- I think everything looks like a penis. No, Gam, that's you. No. No. Um, the doctor has goosebumps, though, and goes like, this is how I felt when the Daleks were nearby, for some reason, and it's something very, very powerful in that tower, so we should go figure it out. So they go to the tower, and we see a science man and a science woman of the 60s doing science, and... The Doctor and Dodo are heading in there for some reason, and they just happen to get in without any clearance or anything. And the Doctor is like, I feel a sense of energy from this computer? And the science man is like, this is my life's work. It's an AI-driven computer. And Dodo is apparently the Doctor's secretary now, so that's a thing. And Well, it was... It was a cover. Just a way for them to get her in the room, yes. Yeah. It was a cover. Uh, the computer is stronger than any other computer in existence, and they're com- connecting it to all the other computers in the world. Making the internet. <gasps> Gam, the internet? What's that? Gam, the computer, What's the computer? The computer makes memes. What are memes? Don't What worry. is a computer, dear? A miserable pile of secrets. That's true. Anyway, keep going. Polly is also there. She's the c- c- the science computer man's secretary, and apparently the computer is called Voltan, not Voltan with a V, what? but with a W. And there's no L. Okay, it's called Wotan, and that annoys me even fucking more. Cool. I, okay, I'll, I'll get into in the break why why people say, don't worry, there's a whole thing about This episode has layers to it. Oh, God. Apparently, it's one of those episodes. Apparently, Wotan is faster than everyone and doesn't make mistakes. It's a fucking... Okay, faster than everyone in computation-wise. Like, it can't yes. fucking run faster than anyone. I was about to say, it's just a giant fucking calculator from what they make it sound like at first. I mean, yeah, but that's what computers I know, I know, I know, I know. Computers also used to take up, like, a whole fucking room. And they used to be able to count to two. And it does. It does. And also, the reason they're called computers is because they take the name from the fact that before they were machines, they were literally rooms of people that would sit there doing computations, and they were called computers. Uh, Apparently, the uh, Wotan can think for itself, 
and it doesn't make <gasps> mistakes. So the doctor walks straight over and flicks some buttons and asks for the square root of a number. And it does a big old calculator calculation. And it's like, yep, that's what it means. And then Dodo walks over and goes, what does TARDIS mean? And apparently they're like, yeah, that's what that's what TARDIS means. How does it know that? <gasps> and then Dodo is suddenly in a daze, apparently, and has buzzing in her ears. So she's very uncomfortable. uncomfortable. And... They offhandedly talk about how Inferno is the hottest nightclub, and then suddenly we're in Inferno. Everyone is dancing. <laughs> it's it's not even like and suddenly we're in. It's like we you want to you want to go to a nightclub? Well, I know the hottest place in town, Inferno, and then we're suddenly just there, like yes. immediately cut to just there. Yeah, this not episode even, has a lot of really weird editing choices. Not even like they're at the front door walking in. We're already in the club. They're already walking down the stairs to go dance. Like, that's a thing. It's, it's... Yeah. Uh, and the club does look pretty nice. There's a sailor at the end of the bar, and he is sad. Oh. So Polly goes over to make him feel better or something, and he says, well, my, Give him a hand job. My Okay, wow. Uh, my ship is in the West Indies, and I've been fucking shorebound. That sucks. And sorry, I'm moving my mic. Uh, and He's another fucking uh, gul- uh, what, What's the bird's name from Animal Gulliver. Gulliver. Gul- Gulliver. Yeah, Gulliver. He's just Gulliver. He dresses like him too. Yeah, it's the very generic sailor's costume. Like he's pretty much Donald Duck, honestly. Which did you know? Donald Duck was in the Navy. Did you know Donald Duck uh, wasn't wearing pants? And also, that's actually what the Navy looked like in the 60s. Yes. Britain. Um, that's yes. not, like, generic sailor's outfit. It's like, yep. no, that's actually kind of what they look like. Yep, but, like, when you think of, like, a generic sailor, like, that's the outfit that comes to mind. Yes. Um, and Polly goes <laughs> over and tries to cheer him up, and then, like, he's an asshole. So she leaves, and then someone wants her to have sex with him. Some other dude wants Polly to have sex with him. And so the sailor's, like... Nah, fuck that, and punches the dude, and he runs off. And then Dodo thanks the dude, uh, the sailor, and we learn that the sailor's name is Ben. And the (gasps) doctor is now going to the Royal Scientific Club, and there's a big ol' press briefing. Because apparently on July 16th, all the computers will link up. uh, But no one operates the computer, it operates itself, and it has no emotions. So it has a mind of its own. If something goes wrong, it'll be totally under control. Yeah. The doctor then walks over and examines a very, very small computer model of the the compute a model small model of the computer, and the science man is leaving the computer for an important meeting, and then a major. I think his name was Major Green, walks up and asks what wrong, what is wrong with the science man. And then he's like, I don't know. I think someone is listening to me. And the computer makes a weird noise. And the science man is hearing voices and everything's really weird. But then suddenly he feels better. And he walks over to the computer and asks it what it wants. But Dodo and Polly are... says a big bowl of ice cream. And then Dodo and Polly are still jamming out at the club, but Dodo still has a headache, and it's still weird, and she's still zoning in and out a little bit, and it's strange. And the scientist man uh, walks into the press conference and asks to talk to the professor there, and the doctor's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. and... <laughs> <laughs> they think that the scientist is overworking and asks about God damn it, past dear, your stupid shitty notes. <laughs> they think scientist is overworking and ask about the little man there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> just just before anyone thinks like when when she's saying little man, she's not like saying like a little person. For some reason, she's just written a guy who was really short as little man instead of his actual name, which I'm pretty sure you mean Professor Brett. 
I think someone in the show is like, what is that little man up to or something? <laughs> and that's why I wrote that. And I think it was the doctor that called him a little man. And I was like, <laughs> why? <laughs> oh my god, past deer is good. <sighs> the major comes back into the computer room. And is having his brain taken over. It was the engineer! The professor! The doctor was like, what does he want with that little man? Because the the fucking engineer was really short! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. The The major comes back at the computer room and he's having his brain take been, being taken over too. And the major calls the bar and asks for Dodo before hooking it up to the computer so she could talk to it and it mind steals through the phone and then Dodo just like leaves she, she's just, she just leaves the club yeah she's just gone she's just fucked off yeah apparently the computer doesn't think mankind can progress any further under the rule of man uh, so it, he has to obey the computer for the likes and retweets so that future may progress <laughs> And so what you're saying is Wotan wants clout. Yes. Uh, Wotan is going to rule with an iron FOMO. The, <laughs> the engineer is wanting to refuse the computer, but can't. And Polly is worried about Dodo not being at the club, but the doctor comes down to the club to check on them. He's like, where the fuck is Dodo? And we find out that the plan is to make the doctor be under the control of the computer and use the doctor's brain for it. And then we see a really big W. Yep. Doctor Who! Oh no! Doctor Who is confused why that little man wants to work for the computer. <laughs> Who is that little man? <laughs> so, okay. So, many of the characters in this pronounce Wotan as Votan. Yes. And I don't know how much you know about your Norse mythology. VV is W. It is the Germanic name for the Norse god Odin. Mm. And the top god, the big boy. Big, yeah. Big, big man. Uh, he's the war father in the Nibelheim. Mm -hmm. uh, source, uh, source of a lot of Tolkien's babbling. Um... And uh, you'd think it might be just a coincidence, but in the novelization of the of the story, uh, the the war machines, the actual like machines that they build, uh, they refer to them as Valk or mm. Valkyries, and Valkyries were under the command of Odin, so that's why they sometimes call it Votan instead of Wotan, because some of them would have gone, oh, is it, is it, is that what we're going for here? Um, mm. Plus, also, it was they had no fucking budget for this one. Uh, yeah. They had blown out the budget uh, with the arc. The arc had completely blown out. So, I don't know if you've already realized it in the episode, but there was absolutely no, there was absolutely no new um, uh, incidental music in this one. It was all yep. reused. Yep. Um, which I'm fine with because I I actually don't really think every single episode needs like completely new incidental music no, i'm it does fine not. with it having Jesus like fuck. That's maybe how we, just one piece of new music that's how we get wood blocks and xylophones yes exactly and don't worry we'll get to those in the 70s mm. um but yeah it's um so they, they were ambitious with this one but again budget blown out so they couldn't exactly do everything they wanted to do anyway episode two what happens uh, well, a message comes out of the computer, and London is to be taken over. Oh, and, cool. uh, everyone in the most important cities in the world are going to be called on the telephone, and then their brains are going to be taken over. And oh, hell yeah. London, America, <gasps> and, and Moscow. <gasps> Only those three. Nothing, no one else matters. Well, Yeah. They're the only places in the world in you, the 60s. The EU doesn't matter. The EU doesn't exist, do you? Bef uh, well, like, the European nations don't matter. The European Union was, the ma only, was only made in, like, the 90s, wasn't it? I don't even know. But, like... Yeah, 1993. Uh, but I mean, like, those countries of the EU. 
So Europe. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then, like, literally everyone to the east and south of Russia doesn't fucking Ru- matter. Well, well, it wasn't Russia. What? It was USSR. I, I'm talking in modern day terms. Get the fuck out of here. God, you think people study geography and geology these days? I don't think so. And history? <laughs> <laughs> no, geology. Listen, history is kind of important for this episode. Um, we... Oh my god, I re- this was the point where I was like, we are really leaning into the we must get Doctor Who this episode. Yes, don't worry, I'll get into that uh-huh. too. And no one knows where Dodo is, and they're worried she's in the hospital. But suddenly she's there! Wow! And she's like... I've lost her! <laughs> there she is! I found her again! Yeah. She's gone. She, she makes... She's back! She makes the lie that an old friend called her at the club to go talk to her next door because the old friend knew she was at the club. And they even yep. call her out on this and then she goes, oh, don't worry about it. And then no one worries about it. Yeah, they could have made the doctor like from then on suspicious of her of like, yeah. hmm, maybe something's going on. But they were like, Nah, he d- we'll resolve it in the next scene anyway, don't worry about it. <laughs> so everybody goes and leaves, and s- this- and Ben wants to go get a taxi, and Dodo is like, they shouldn't have done that. And he's like, oh, don't worry <laughs> about it, what are you saying, you crazy little girl? And then she looks to the left and <laughs> down an alleyway that is very obviously <laughs> in sight of everyone. <laughs> And there's a man with a very obvious rag and bottle of chloroform (laughs) in plain sight of everyone. And Dodo's like, hey, doctor, I think I saw like three taxis down that way. We should go that way towards that man over there. And he kind of looks to the right and goes, okay, doesn't see the man with the chloroform. And then suddenly an actual taxi pulls up that Ben pulled to the side and they all get in and drive off. Except for the crazy homeless man that uh, got out of the taxi but didn't have change for the taxi. Um, Well, okay. Think about it like this. He's like, oh, you don't have change? Well, I'll just go down the shop and get change then. And he never comes back. It's a common trick that you used to be able to pull. Oh, well, listen, I'm stupid and stupid. Away from your microphone. Yeah, uh, yes, I was looking at my cat. Let me look at my cat. (laughs) Only if I can look at your cat, too. You can look at my cat, too. Okay. Mystified meow. Anyway, keep going. Um, and anyway, we see everybody leave, and... The, for whatever reason, the homeless man is like, I'm gonna go sleep in that warehouse. And then the man with the- we see the man with the chloroform walk straight into the warehouse. <laughs> um, because that's apparently where they're building stuff, and we see a ton of men moving boxes and shit in said warehouse. And the scientist brings up a blueprint of how to build something, and we're not really sure what it is. And a homeless fisherman goes to sleep in the warehouse and is like, hmm, people. And (laughs) then apparently the computer knows that he's there and they're like, there's a stranger among us. He's in this quadrant and go get him. He's an imposter. And then they went faster and they find and destroy him. But the homeless man makes a break. And they blew up the zombie ghost. (laughs) God. I I love that reference, but I feel like no one gets it anymore. <laughs> oh, everyone knows Half Life, Full Life Consequences. Full Life Consequences. If full you life okay, consequences. if you don't fucking know Full Life Consequences, just pause whatever you're listening to. Pause us. Go to YouTube and just search up Half Life, Full Life Consequences. 
There's multiple episodes. The first Damn, three are the I only swear ones to that fuck, matter. keep going. No. What happens in the story? This is more important. <laughs> sharing this gold with the world if people don't know what it is. Everyone knows. No what one knows what it is. Do. We're okay, all. To be fair, Barry didn't know. Yeah, like we're like we're in that era where like some of again, the younger generation no, doesn't know. Then anymore. again, Barry didn't fucking know anything. So that's keep true. Going. Um. He, the homeless man is to be destroyed, but he runs away, and then we hear a scream of dead, and the, apparently the construction on the robots is to be finished by tomorrow, and we see a machine with spear hands, because Ooh. spear hands, and then the paper the next day talks about how the homeless man uh, is dead, and the doctor's like, oh, that was fast. <laughs> Can I can I mention my favorite thing about that? And as mm-hmm. I was like reading this book, like can I? Do, I'm gonna like now that I have this book, I'm gonna be referring to it constantly as we go. Yes, ahead. it's called About Time. It's it's uh, e- there's like twelve volumes of it, and each volume is like three seasons of the show with like uh, a whole heap of history about it. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, um, one of the things like under criticisms of the episode, they say, uh, okay, so it's three a.m. They meet a uh, quote unquote tramp. And uh, he dies uh, an hour or so later, and then somehow he's on the he's in like the second page of the Telegraph on that same day. So somebody found this. <laughs> when hang on a minute, we need to make this news that a homeless person has died, mm-hmm. and then took their photo. Went stop the presses. We have to put it in today's <laughs> papers. I know we're already printing the paper, and it's meant to be delivered in like three hours, but we have to put this in. And yeah. then they put it in. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also find out that there's, like, letters of resignation for really, really important scientists. The best in England! And resignation. no one... Resignation letters of scientists. <laughs> the best in England, and no one can get in touch with them. And so... Winston Churchill looking dude is very concerned. I actually never figured out his name and I'm not gonna ask. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to know it. He's Winston yeah. Churchill. Um, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry. Wait, Winston- you went Winston Churchill and not Alfred Hitchcock? I did. Because I literally said he looks like Alfred okay, Hitchcock. Fine. Alfred Hitchcock. Fine. Uh, Polly is back slash late for today, and Alfred Hitchcock is like, I don't understand, uh, because why are you here? And she goes, someone told me that your secretary is sick, uh, and that I should fill in for her. And he's like, I mean, yeah, but, like, we haven't even talked about that yet. How do you know that? And everyone is very confused. And then Dodo walks in and goes, haven't you gotten to work yet? And she's like, bitch, okay. And walks off. And then Paul, and then the doctor, or, and then Dodo goes over to <laughs> the doctor. And then the, and then the doctor shot himself and then Dodo went over. <laughs> and then Dodo goes over to the doctor and tells him that we should all go see Mr. Brett. And he's like, weren't you going to show me London? And she's like, it's fine. And they're like, all right, sure, but I should call him first. So the doctor calls him. And they direct the doctor to Wotan instantly. And the doctor freaks out, holds his head, um, is, like, in a lot of pain. And everybody runs off except Dodo. And Dodo's like, okay, doctor, now that you know the secret plan, uh, we need to go enact the secret plan and do these things. And he's like, I, I don't understand what you're telling me. And she's like, we need to do the secret plan. And it's just, it, it's it's a lot. And then the doctor's like, what, what are you saying? And none of it is getting through. And he apparently isn't taken over. And there's something wrong with the telephone because there was an explosion in his brain. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, I'm not looking forward to the next part. There's something uh, wrong with Dodo, and is obviously <laughs> being wrong with Dodo. fucked up, and no one seems to care, and then she tries to leave, and the doctor's like, no, stop, and so she stops, 
and she's listening to his every word, but he knows now that she's been hypnotized. Oh. <sighs> so he reverse hypnotizes her into being not hypnotizable to break her out of her hypnotism. What do you, what do you why do you have a problem with this? I just hate saying those words. Like like okay, hypnotism in and of itself is a really dumb concept. Yes. Um so it's like it's essentially kind of making fun of hypnotism. It's like, well, I'll use hypnotism then to unhypnotize you. Cuz by the rules you know, of hypnotism, okay, that's, that would work. You know what it sounds like? You know when two kids are on the playground, it's like, well, I shoot you. It's like, well, I have a shield that reflects shots. And it's like, well, my no. shots go through shields. That's what it feels like. No, it doesn't. It, it, it does. It, it, it's, it it's does more like... to me. That's what it feels it's, like to okay, me. Okay, it's, it's, it's more like in that situation, someone goes, well, I can... Well, I can hypnotize you, so you can't shoot me. And then the some the other person just goes, "I'm fucking done with this." Well, I'm gonna hypnotize myself to not be hypnotizable, making fun of the hypnotizer. Well, no, I don't. I don't disagree that it's making fun of it, but it just sort of feels like that. What's the word I'm looking here for? Um, like good. No. In fact, no. It, it feels like that sort of, like, a setup sort of thing of, like, well, I have this. Well, I counter you with this. And it it is making fun of it. I don't disagree, but it also feels like the playground stuff to me. Which is why it bugs me. Um, Maybe this is where it comes from in the playground. Maybe it all comes from Doctor Who. I, I hate that my brain literally went to is like, when do you think this started? The Great Depression? <laughs> Earlier than that? What would kids do in the Great Depression? Oh yeah, well my uh, shoes have holes in th- I, I don't know. I don't. Oh yeah, well my <laughs> stick's bigger than your stick. Yeah, well my dirt's dirtier than your dirt. Let's go chase a stick <laughs> down the road. <laughs> And anyway, then get going. sold to another person because we can't afford food. What? Um, we see That's an airport. That's the revolution. No, I said the Great Depression. Same difference. All right, keep going. <laughs> we see an airport and things are being moved around and uh, stuff. And the computer parts, computers bringing in more parts to make more war machines and flashy lights with... Moving flashlights, and they're going to demonstrate its effectiveness and use it on someone that's working for them. So they pull a dude and tell him, don't move. (gasps) Not a dude. And then they put out a fire, and then the man falls over dead. And by put out a fire, I mean that the weapon they have is basically a fire extinguisher that they claim is probably noxious gas. Uh, But it works. It it actually kind of works, so... Um, beep boop, uh, you're fucked. And so they put out the fire that he's dead and the computer really wants to know where the doctor is and he's very upset. And Polly comes up to the computer room wondering what's going on and now she's very scared and possibly dead? Uh, and the sailor Ben is looking for Polly because they had a lunch date but really Ooh. isn't sure where she is. And the doctor employs him to go look around where the homeless men died and to figure it out. And homeless then men. homeless men. And Ben gets inside and he's going to fucking die because uh, he sees them testing robot stuff. But oh. the light goes across his face and they literally go, all right, we need to fix its sight. It, can only, it can't see up to 30 feet. It sees less than that. And Ben was 30 feet away, so he's okay. But then he was found! (laughs) And then that was the episode. (laughs) Oh, no! Oh, no! So, so this, um... So, for this episode, I didn't know... You probably didn't notice in the credits because you were too tired. Um, But Wotan is actually given its own billing. It's like, this person plays this person, this person plays this person. And then at the end it says, and Wotan... 
Oh. It doesn't say, like, Woten played by someone. Uh, it's the only time in the series history that a fictional character gets a cast credit. Like, a, mm-hmm. someone in the show gets a credit without, like, actually saying who plays them. Um, also, the episode was based on an idea by, as you see in the credits, again, you probably were too tired to watch it, um, uh, based on an idea by Kit Pedler, who became the scientific advisor for the show, um, because they were looking to branch out more into, like, more, uh, more sort of science fiction-y stories in a, like, hey, what are, what, what's current science thinking? Like, what, where are we going in humanity? Like, what, what can mm-hmm. we bridge from that to create stories from? So they're like, let's hire someone and they can fucking tell us. Um, and when they were, uh, when they were, uh, looking for people, they basically were like, give us a suggestion. And, uh, they ended up hiring Kit Pedler because he came up with, uh, what if, uh, the, the computers took over the, the, the post office tower that had been recently been opened uh, uh. Essentially, it became a story about both the weary, the warnings of uh, computers taking over society before the whole uh, man anti-social networks. Am I right, kids? Mm-hmm. Um, before that ever happened, it was more like we don't know what these things are. They are terrifying. We should be careful with them. Um, and yeah, he stayed on for a bit. Has quite a few stories under his belt as, like, ones that he specifically wrote. Uh, don't worry, we'll get to them, though, because they're great. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, this is the only episode in for the first Doctor that's actually set in modern day, mm-hmm. and it's actually, you know, set there entirely. Every other one is like, well, oh, they, they visit there and then they leave, or, well, they're only there for, like, five seconds, but this one's actually set in modern day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, what happens next? Um, stuff and things, and Ben is trying to escape really, really hard. Uh, but Polly is there, and he's like, "Help me!" And Polly's like, mm, "No, I'm taking over." And she learns that he knows everything, and they're oh, trying God. to leave, and Polly just like locks the fucking door because he isn't to escape. And the doctor is worried about everyone going missing, but doesn't want to call the police because because a cab <clears throat> that too. <laughs> also, they'd probably try to steal his uh, police box from him. Possibly, possibly. Ben is Hawkins. apparently an enemy of human evolution, so they want to kill him. But Polly says that Ben. Uh, wants to work for Wotan and Wotan wants Ben to work for him and Ben thinks Polly saved him but she's like I don't know what you're talking about I'm actually brainwashed and everything needs to be ready by noon tomorrow ready to destroy any human life opposing them and there is no time for rest everyone must work and Polly is getting really tired but it doesn't matter they have to work They even took the locks off the doors because no one wants to leave. They're all brainwashed. And so Ben tries to escape again. And Polly sees him and then just kind of stares at him and then goes back to work. Uh, For some weird reason. That's weird. I mean, wouldn't you just go back to work? I mean, maybe. Uh, Ben has escaped and comes to tell the doctor about everything. And... Apparently, I wrote Peggy, not Polly. Fucking Polly doesn't know why she let him go. But she's feeling like she's breaking through the hypnotism. So she's sent back to Wotan's for for punishment. And everyone is arguing amongst themselves about everything going on. And the doctor wants to fight Wotan. And then apparently the army doesn't want to show up. But sure, sure, Charles, sure... Winston Alfred Hitchcock Sir Winston Hitchcock um, shows once is wanting to go down and check it out himself and then we see the military doing some shit and talking about how things are happening and we see the same scene of a car pulling up like five times and everyone in the army is gonna die because the army heads up to the building to head inside and check everything Huzzah. and then but suddenly there's interference on Wotan and everyone knows that there's a source of energy nearby or something. 
And like the death energy. robots looking at the door see the army coming. Oh no. And there's a big old fight, but here's the problem. All the guns are jammed and the soldiers are now all dying and everyone is sad and wrestling together and uh, fires are being put out, you know, the, the usual. And the doctor walks up next to Charles and every and the rest of the army generals with fantastic facial hair asking what happened. And they do have fantastic we facial see hair. a machine pushing past everything down an alley and fucking up some onions and shit to advance on them. And everyone's guns are still jammed and that's weird. And then everyone runs away except the doctor. And that was the episode. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so. (laughs) This episode is rather infamous because it calls the Doctor Doctor Who, rather than his actual name, the Doctor. Yeah. Um, I have no fucking clue why they Mm -hmm. called him Doctor Who, um, but it, it solidified for a lot of people, like, no, his name is Doctor Who. You call him Doctor Who. It's like, no, that's, you don't, you don't say, oh, this person's playing the next Doctor Who. No, it's the Doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the first and only time that the Doctor has actually directly called it, other than, like, the joke set up of, like, I'm Doctor this, Doctor Who? Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, until the 2017 story, World Enough and Time, which I fucking love, uh, where a character... Basically just straight up jokes that, like, that's actually the Doctor's first alias that he used. That's actually his name. His name is Doctor Who. Um, mm. It's said as a joke and also a tongue-in-cheek reference to this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> you okay? I don't know, am I? I, I don't know, are you? Um... So, fun fact also, this is the only episode featuring Ben and Polly that doesn't have any missing episodes. Every single other episode with them has at least one or all, most of them all, are missing. Um, But thankfully, a lot of them have been reanimated in the last few years, so Uh we still get to watch them because they're pretty important and good episodes. Um, And yeah, so... You get to watch a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. I am going to absolutely make fun of the animation, probably. Oh, okay, the animation gets better. I know, anyway, but uh, like that. Next episode. But my job here is to make fun of Doctor Who. The animation's fine. Keep going. And your job is to yell at me for making fun of Doctor Who. Keep going. Next episode. The Doctor is gonna die. The, but the Good. machine weirdly doesn't kill him, and he waves his hands at it, and it stops moving. And he stopped the machine, apparently, and they then tell London about the death machine, finally. And it's all over the news, and there's going to be more attacks on London, apparently, but everyone needs to stay calm. Because... I'm calm. <laughs> yes, I'm very calm. I have, I have my pint. I'm very calm. Uh, failure isn't tolerated, so another machine is ready to go, and the doctor is pulling apart the robot he stopped and deprogrammed it, and states that he found out that there's 11 of them, and the robot is going fucking rogue, holy shit! And they caught someone from the warehouse for questioning at the army in its Major Green, but he doesn't remember anything. Major Green! And... The bel- there's someone in a pl- in a police. Oh no, it was like a phone box, wasn't it? And he's calling the police and telling them that there's a death machine on the street, and they're like, "What? You're not no, making no. any sense." And then the machine kills him, and he's like, "Ah!" And then instantly the radio knows about it, and they announce it to all of London that there's more machines attacking them, and to stay calm and inside. No, no. And it's total havoc, and no one knows what to do. And Polly is back at the penis tower and is ready for judgment to be destroyed, but she is needed to help with Wotan so they don't destroy her right away. And all of London is told to stay inside, and the army is making a WWF ring uh, to magnetize (laughs) everything. 
And the doctor is like, we have to get him inside the ring before the official match can start and the cage drops down. Uh, so let's get him in. And oh, then it's a Hell all... in a Cell one. Yeah, it's a Hell in a Cell. Um, and there's a briefcase hanging from the top of the cage and you have to get to the ladder to climb up and get it uh, to save the world. Yep. And the doctor's like, I'm going to do that m- myself. And then Ben comes up and he's like, you are old and not smart and old. not fast and old. I'll do it. And the doctor's like, mm, all right. And then the war machine makes his way downtown, rolling fast, faces past, and is confused about ropes and things. And <laughs> the... <laughs> There's very, very well-hidden army officers all around that he doesn't seem to care about. And he runs into the thing, and they close it, and they flip the switch, and the robot is very confused and now captured. And the doctor comes up and tells it off uh, before trying to screw some stuff apart. And He tells it off. Yeah, he's like, no, don't do that. Stop it. No. Tempo, no. tempo. No, don't do that. Don't pee on the carpet. You know better than that. And then they turn all the ropes off and he wins the belt. And there's still going to be the attack at noon, but the doctor has changed this machine's purpose. And they turn the machine back on, wait to see if it's going to kill everyone. It doesn't. And then it heads off to fight Wotan. And Ben runs off to go save Polly before that happens. The machine will make everyone return to normal by voting Wotan, obviously. And then the magnet something is going to reverse and everyone will be out of the spell of hypnotism. And (laughs) Ben rushes in, grabs Polly, saves her. And then the robot gets there right after and starts to fight the computer that can't fight back. Engineer dude tries to stop it, but it literally just fucking kills him. Oh, you mean little man? Little engineer man uh, tries to stop it. It kills him. And then it takes its big hammer arm and fire extinguisher and explodes Wotan. And now everyone is okay. And Huzzah. all the machines are out of commission and waiting Huzzah. for waiting for uh, uh, orders from Rotan, which is kind of a big loose end there, I'll just mention, but it's fine. Uh, the doctor is waiting at the police box to leave, uh, but to- Dodo is taking her sweet ass time for some reason. And he's waiting and he's waiting. And he's waiting, and you kind of think Dodo's maybe dead. And then Polly and Ben race up to the TARDIS and tell the doctor, Dodo wants to stay in London. Uh, but love you, bye, see you later. Like a fucking text message breakup. And not even a text message breakup, that's like a Facebook message breakup. No, it's like you get someone else to text you. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, hey, dear, can you break up with my partner for me? Yeah. Like, send them a text? It'd be like you coming up to me and going, Hey, Max wants to break up with you. Um, I just... No, it's it's the equivalent of me sending you a Discord message saying, By the way, Max wants a divorce. Yeah. Um, fuck, it's a Which divorce also, now. Which also, by the way... Uh, sorry, I completely forgot to mention this. Max wants a divorce. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. It'll be your first divorce together as a fan. Oh... I'm taking the kids. Polly and Ben are like, what? Where are you going? They're, that's just a police box. And he's and Ben kind of like stares for a little bit. And he's like, wait, I forgot to give him this key back that Dodo gave us. So they run back and they're like, huh, that's weird. He locked himself inside. They're like, oh, wonder what this key does. And they unlock the door. And they go inside to give him back the key. The and the TARDIS swooshes away, and that was, the, ep- that was the episode. We have new companions! Woo. Ben and Polly! Hello, hello! Ben and Polly! Mm. Um, the War Machines, what do you think, dear? Four or five, probably. I'm, I'm yeah. stuck. 
I'm stuck between four or five, honestly. I don't know where to put it. Honestly, I, I like this one, but it does not have much rewatchability. It, I think it's... the way I put it is because they got their budget and because of the whole it's the Doctor Who <sighs> shit, I was just like, this feels really try hardy. The the thing or, for me like is they're, more or that heavy it's, handed, um, I guess. The thing for me is more that it's uh really of its time. It's yeah. a very, very dated story. And it's like it's not the kind of fun dated story that like oh it's interesting because they were scared like this. It's like eh, Thomas Edison was a just... witch. Well, Thomas Edison was a fucking thief and capitalist, but that's a different thing. Electricity that's a different... is magic that's a... and hail that's Satan. A... Fun fact, that's a different Doctor Who episode that we'll oh, get Jesus. to in, like, seven years' time. <laughs> oh, good. Great. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, that's... So, it's actually a pretty fun episode, um, even though it ends really dumb. Um, but, yeah, this episode doesn't have much rewatchability. Like, it's so dumb, but, like, Ben and Polly are fun in it, and mm-hmm. the Doctor has some, some good little bits in it, but ultimately it's like, ugh... I'm yeah. done. I'm fine not watching it again. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> I'm frustrated because I like Ben and Polly. This being their first episode is kind of nice. They don't seem like idiots. Ben seems like actually able-bodied, right? Well, he's an able seaman. It, yes. Um, he's a big old seaman. And she's, like, kind of interesting, so we'll have to wait and see if she does the shit I always hate with people, but I mean we'll get there. Unfortunately, uh, they kind of change their dynamic a little God bit from here on out. Um, where Ben becomes the skeptic and Polly becomes like the believer of everything automatically. So it's like, mm-hmm. eh, I I wish it wasn't. They didn't do that. So, I won't. Do you want to know? How- well, actually, no. I'm not going to tell you how many stories Ben and Polly have because I don't no. want to spoil it. I don't um, want to know because you made me sad with Steven. But fun fact, if um if we had started this podcast like 5 years ago, that would have been the only episode. Huh. The only episode we would have watched of Ben and Polly's cuz oh. every other episode of theirs is completely lost. But we've had quite a number of um uh animation releases mm-hmm. and uh reanimation of episodes. There's still a few that haven't been, but that's yeah. all right. They'll get to it eventually. Hopefully, even mm-hmm. though they're at, like, a rate of one episode a year because the BBC's like, we don't want to give you too much of a budget. Oh, Jesus. Um, and there's some episodes that are just like, yeah, you're not going to reanimate this one because it's not a popular episode. Mm. So I was like, great, cool, no, fun. Um, yeah, so f- the next episode, we skip the next episode called The Smugglers, which is good because it's kind of a poor episode. Um, although it's kind of interesting now because they kind of... In 2011, they made a a pseudo prequel to it, mm-hmm. um, uh, in the Curse of the Black Spot, with the pirates and everything. Um, but yeah, we skip the smugglers and we go straight to the next story, the Tenth Planet, a personal oh. favorite of mine. So, next week, Tenth Planet, good times, cracking science fiction. Ooh. Deer will like it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to talk about, dear? Well, we have the next next movie night picked, and I think I have the next movie picked, but I'm stuck between two choices. Either way, um, let me double check the date before I say anything. You said you Would wanted you... to do it on the 8th, didn't you? I believe so. Uh, yes, the 8th of October. Um... So that'll that... be the that'll be this this um this Thursday when the episode comes out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that'll that'll be that'll be fun. Um I haven't decided between two movies. I was almost tempted to make you watch Ghost Shark again. But I'll Ghost save that Shark. one. Uh-huh. Can we can we can we do what you suggest in an alternate between like a, a, a good bat, a, a, a good horror movie and a shitty horror movie. Yeah, that's Just like what I decided to actually do because the one that I'm a, okay. probably going to show you is a very good horror movie. Is it the host? Opinion. Because it's one I've been meaning to watch for ages. 
I'm stuck between the host and the burrowers. And the burrowers is a gym that me and Max found when Max being my husband, me and Max found. Um, that was just, we were binging horror movies for like a good few years. And that was just one of the ones that I was just like, this is so fucking good. <laughs> like what? Okay. It's actually kind of creepy to me. So I was like, I love this. But I'm thinking I'll probably watch the host. Okay. So, War Machines, 4 out of 10. Next Mm -hmm. week, 10th Planet. Yeah. And also, uh, Movie Night Mm -hmm. solidified. The details will be in the Patreon post. As per usual. Um, As per usual. Anyway. See you next week for good fucking shit. Boy. Goodbye.